Are you aware of just how often our so-called leaders have nearly killed us all with nuclear Armageddon over the past few decades, including over the past few weeks? Well, let's get into it, because Armageddon's sick of this shit! Should I really start with a pun? I don't... It seems cruel to everyone involved. I don't... So the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists has a doomsday clock designed to tell us how close to nuclear catastrophe the human race is. Seems like a good thing to keep track of, right? You know? I mean, maybe not as important as the countdown to Taylor Swift's new album, but still important. The Doomsday Clock was started by some unassuming patent clerk named Albert Einstein in 1945, and it uses the symbolism of midnight as the end of days. We hit midnight, all over. No more. So these scientists, and patent clerks apparently, recently announced that the human race is a hundred seconds to midnight. Basically on Doom's doorstep. Oh, Doom's doorstep. Well, that doesn't, doesn't sound so bad. Maybe once we go through the door, Doom will have like a, a bun cake for us or a cup of tea. Anyway, the reason we're so close to the killing of all humanity is in no small part due to the United States of America, perpetrating endless war around the globe, instigating what numerous U.S. officials and even Bloomberg News called a proxy war in Ukraine with Russia, instigating a, a proxy war in Taiwan with China, or trying to, and generally making your drunk friend who likes to wave around his handgun when he's plastered seem down to earth and easy going. You're ducking behind a cabinet. Well, at least he's not going to war with China. But did you know that because our country is run by sociopaths, there have been many other times in the past when they've nearly killed us all. Let's look at a few of the greatest hits. Gotta begin with Cuban Missile Crisis, right? We were in the Cold War, US and Soviet Union at each other's throats, Khrushchev starts putting missiles in Cuba, JFK and the US create a blockade. It was basically a, an Old West showdown with each guy's finger on the trigger, ready to fire at any second. Just the sound of a, a mouse fart could set it all off. Except instead of one cowboy dying, it would be everyone in, in the world, in, in, this, in this world, this world. So I guess it's, it's a little different than the cowboy thing. But it gets worse. Modern day historians note that the standoff nearly turned into a global calamity with bombers in the air and nearly 3,000 American nuclear weapons alone in a state of readiness. The Cuban Missile Crisis could have led to the end of the world in mere minutes. It's fucking insanity. Because here's what a lot of people don't think about. Do you know what a state of readiness means? It means an 18 year old Air Force pilot not old enough to legally buy a fucking beer flying around on two hours of sleep with world-ending bombs attached to his jet, ready to fire the first shot when he gets a call from his 42-year-old commander, okay? And look, I'm 42. A 42-year-old man is not a rational adult. We're just fucking children with saggier skin. This world is run by fucking children. Doesn't matter how many little stupid stars he has on his jacket. He's an idiot. Are those scratch and sniff stars what you got there? mean you're special? Anyway, the Cuban Missile Crisis wasn't the only near nuclear catastrophe back then. In 2001, newly available documents reveal that the Kennedy White House drew up detailed plans for a nuclear first strike against the Soviets. But apparently Kennedy was heavily pressured by the true psychopaths at the Pentagon. As the Atlantic covered not long ago, the Joint Chiefs Joint Strategic Capabilities Plan foresaw the use of 170 atomic and hydrogen bombs in Moscow alone. The destruction of every major Soviet, Chinese, and Eastern European city, and hundreds of millions of deaths. That was their plan. Sickened by a formal briefing on the plan, Kennedy turned to a senior administration official and said, and we call ourselves the human race, before storming out of the meeting. These assholes actually thought that if they obliterated the half of the human population they weren't so keen on, then everything would be great. Just peace and sunshine. Yeah, yeah, but the remaining half of the population would be walking around like, isn't this wonderful? Life is so great and happy. Keep smiling or the Pentagon people might kill us all. This is a beautiful life we have. I'm, I'm happy. 
And Kennedy wasn't the first to be shocked how eager the Pentagon was to obliterate a large portion of humans on Earth. Just the other day, famed whistleblower Daniel Ellsberg saw the insane warmongering being pushed by the U.S. against China, and he released a previously censored account of the 1958 Taiwan Strait Crisis that was sponsored by the Pentagon. The report provides a hair-raising portrait of a reckless U.S. military leadership relentlessly pressing President Eisenhower for the authority to carry out nuclear attacks on communist China. And that was at a time when they were pretty certain tens of millions of humans would die in China's retaliatory strikes. And you would think, after a baker's dozen incidents that nearly blew the skin off of every man, woman, and child, you would think we might put the nukes away, lock them in a closet, swallow the key, you know? But nope. How many examples do we need before we realize the military guys in charge of our nuclear plan are the last people we should ever want holding nuclear weapons? How many times do we catch a, a pedophile before we, we go, this guy can't be around children, he, he just can't. One time, maybe less. But with the Pentagon, we find out these military goons want to kill us all over and over and over again. And we're just like, ah, let's give them another chance. Yeah, hey, I had a bad week. Hey, you know, it was a tough, tough, tough day. His dog died. What, 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 what? Just because the guy has a thousand yard stare and wakes up every night screaming, kill them all! You, you're gonna, you're gonna be all critical. You're gonna be all, 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 all critical of how he's running things. He needs your support, all right? Give him a chance. Let's go with one final example. One night in 1961, the U.S. dropped nuclear bombs on North Carolina. Oh, whoops. A B-52 crashed in the middle of the night in Faro, North Carolina, but it was more than just a downed aircraft. Somewhere out there in the winter darkness lay the remains of two 3.8 megaton thermonuclear atomic bombs. Each contained more firepower than the combined destructive force of every explosion caused by humans from the beginning of time to the end of World War II. Jesus Christ! This is in a time when, uh, before most people had color TVs, but we were creating bombs that could explode in Washington and knock the paint off the buildings in Oklahoma? Fucking hell. You kind of get a feel for what humankind really cares about, judging by the things we're really working hard at making bigger and better. Atomic bombs are unveiled in the 1940s, and by 15 years later, they're like more powerful than the sun. Meanwhile, the first blanket was probably 10,000 years old, and they didn't come up with putting sleeves on that mofo until 1997. We could have had the slanket hundreds of years ago, but no one cared. Eh, no one would. All, all, the, all the great minds were working on how to best destroy humanity rather than how to keep us cuddly warm. Anyway, there's a crash in 1961, North Carolina, but how much can you really blame the military, right? Planes go down sometimes. Some of those times they have, uh, you know, a few thermonuclear bombs on board. The military couldn't have known, except that a few weeks before, the Air Force and the plane's builder, Boeing, had realized that a recent modification fitting the B-52's wings with fuel bladders could cause the wings to tear off. Ow! Oh! Just the wings to tear off? Nothing serious. You can still fly without at least a, a couple, couple, of, couple of wings. I, I learned that from a Bette Midler song. That's, I, that's correct, right? I don't know much about planes. Robert McNamara, who'd been Secretary of Defense at the time, told reporters in 1983 the bomb's arming mechanism had six or seven steps to go through to detonate, and it went through all but one. All but one. I would think that if a, if a nuclear bomb is on a plane, someone would have to type in a fucking code or some shit to set that thing off. Even if the code's just one, two, three, four, five, I don't care, just that, because the, the odds of the mountain that the plane careens into, typing in the one, two, three, four, five, fairly slim, but nope, apparently not. 
No code at all. These bombs are just programmed to go off if they feel scared, apparently. While the military recovered most of the two bombs, they actually didn't recover everything. In 2021, a reporter said while standing at the farm where the crash took place, about 180 feet below our shoes, gently radiating away with a half-life of 24,000 years, lies the plutonium core of the bomb's secondary stage. Oh, great. Great. So when worms the size of tow trucks come out of the ground and start eating farmers in North Carolina, I guess our military will just call it collateral damage. Look, the point is, we're at 100 seconds to doomsday. We've got lunatics running the show, just pushing buttons and, and seeing what happens. Nancy Pelosi's flying all over. And is like, oh, let's see what happens now. I'm in Taiwan. Donald Trump is assassinating Iranian generals. Let's see if this pisses anyone off. Maybe. These people are psychos. We need a new way of thinking. We need a new plan. And it ain't coming out of our bought off politicians. That's all for now. But if you get a chance, please follow me at LeeCamp.net. And if you want to see this show continue, become a member on Patreon. We are completely independently funded by people like you. Keep fighting.